Okay. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Kayur Mistri. I'm a founder of Studio Sympathia. Studio Sympathia is a speculative architecture firm working at the intersection of architecture, fiction, and technology. I've received my master's from Schiller Schuler Architecture class in Frankfurt, Germany in 2017. I'm currently working as a senior architect at Practice Design in Mumbai. I've also had the opportunity to work with Mark Foster Gage in New York City on a very high resolution design for a desert resort in Saudi Arabia. The project that you see on the screen is the project that I worked on. I've also, uh, I've also, had, uh, I've also worked uh, in Frankfurt for about two years and in Mumbai uh, for about three years. And uh, I've also played an integral role in organizing a 10-day A visiting school in Mumbai and uh, the making of two virtual reality exhibitions. So before I start with the introduction to ZBrush, I would like to thank uh, Design Intervention for making this happen. And um, thank you so much for everyone for joining this webinar. I hope uh, this webinar is helpful to you and that you learn something. So this webinar is going to be more of a um, casual. Okay, but, uh, just a second, sorry to interrupt. I think there's some background noise going on. Yeah. So guys, if you have your mute mic switched on, please mute it from your end. And I think Kayu, you can also mute uh, the participants mic. Yeah. Just so, sure. you know, you can maybe switch it on when you're having some interaction with them. But yeah, apart sure. from that, I think better to mute. Um, how do I mute? Uh, just a moment. Huh? Just um, go to participants and yeah, mute all. Yeah, I think everyone is on mute. So in case some noise pops up, you can mute if it's not on entry. Yeah. And also, I think um, your voice is also a little less audible, so maybe a little. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll try to speak louder. Yeah. yeah. So uh, this webinar is going to be more of a casual introductory session where, firstly, I will talk briefly about how ZBrush is useful for architecture and design. And uh, I will also explain some of the tools and techniques in ZBrush. And in the end, we will have a Q&A session where if you have any doubts, we could discuss them. So let's start with ZBrush in architecture. So ar architecture in the last century has taken many turns from uh, modernism to postmodernism, from contradictions of deconstructivism to the folding in architecture of the early 90s digital architecture. And as digital architecture grew, an increase in the number of polygons helped create smooth surfaces. Today, uh, computing power and uh, new tools help us envision architectural space in, in millions of polygons with much higher detail and surface articulation. So the goal is to invent new species of architecture. And what I like about ZBrush is that it helps us explore these high resolution spaces and the effects of an architectural object. So ZBrush is predominantly used in the creative graphics and gaming industry. It's a very versatile software that allows creators to freely sketch out their ideas in 3D, as well as produce highly polished models. With ZBrush, you can make all kinds of shapes from fluid to hard surface and everything in between and beyond. So what I love the most about ZBrush is that you don't have to know upfront what you're going to make. You can just start sculpting and uh, modify mesh. And develop your ideas along with it. So there is a paradigm shift here where you're not starting with an idea in your mind and uh, using a computer only to develop your idea. Instead, you are using digital tools such as ZBrush to, as an ideation tool, just like the process of sketching something on the paper, 
here you are sketching in 3D. So let's get in and uh, I'm gonna try to keep it as basic and uh, as focused as possible. Yeah. So when you, uh, so right now I have my custom UI for ZBrush, but uh, when you start ZBrush, just a moment, this zoom, yeah. Oh, the zoom bar keeps coming in between. Can you, can you, uh, you all hear me clearly? Yes. yes. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, we can. Okay. So this is how your ZBrush interface will look like uh, when you start. And uh, yeah. So um, on, on your right, when you click here, you'll see a lot of the primitive meshes that you can work with, that you can start your model with, for example, sphere or cube. These are primitive meshes. And uh, in order to get started, you need to left click and just drag. And in order to work with this, this model, for example, right now, if you see when wherever I'm clicking, so these are just 2D uh, screenshots of that particular sphere. These are not these many spheres. Like if you if you now if I try to maneuver, I will not be able to uh, move around or orbit around this mesh. So for that, if I want to edit this sphere, I need to click here, edit object, and it will edit. Uh, it will, like we'll be able to work on this sphere, the, the last sphere that we clicked. And all the other ones are just screenshots. To clear the other ones, you can just press Control N. And then you will have this model. And uh, the way ZBrush works is that uh, ZBrush has these primitive meshes, which are uh, not editable meshes. For example, right now, if I try to click here, it will tell me that to enable sculpting, please convert this 3D primitive into a polymesh 3D. So I'll have to convert this into a polymesh 3D and I can click here and now it's a poly, it's a identical mesh, but it's a editable mesh right now. So now I'll, I'm able to edit this model. And on the left, uh, these pa these palettes that that you see here you have all different kinds of brushes from sculpting brushes to mesh modifying brushes to mesh uh, retopologizing uh, refining uh, brushes then there are different kinds of strokes like for example let's use a standard brush over here and um, at the top you you'll see you can reduce, increase or reduce your brush size. There is an intensity, for example, I'll use a freehand stroke. So now I'm able to um, edit this mesh. So right now we have very less polygons. That's why it is creating these kinds of profiles. So I will get into uh, different I will get into uh, these. So this Dynamesh, I'll get into this later, but right now let's just focus on uh, initial few, few brushes. So now I'm able to make, because I have more polygons, I've increased the number of polygons through Dynamesh. Now I'm able to make these shapes. And um, if I change the uh, stroke, the kind of effect that I get is different. If I change the stroke to drag and drag, I'm just making one single instance of that particular brush. Then there is alpha, texture. We'll get into this later on. These are different kinds of uh, brush strokes that you can apply while uh, sculpting. Then there is, these are different kinds of materials that you can work with.
and uh, on the right you'll see you have this tool menu toolbar so the way uh, in zbrush each model is considered as a single tool so right now you have i have say this one this as one tool this one as another tool so what you can do is you can work on one particular model and um, if you want to make another option you can again go to sphere make it a polymesh 3d and then start sculpting so that way within one project you have multiple models if you see at the top in the file menu you have something called as save project and on the right side here you have something called as save tool so in a zbrush project within a zbrush project you are saving all these different kinds of models together whereas when you save tool you are saving only one particular model so next time when you import one uh, when you import uh, when you load a tool you are only importing one particular model so that just uh, important to know when to save a project and when to save a tool then uh, at the top you have uh, something called lightbox where you have all the recent files you have your project files so this is zbrush project files these are preset project files like say right now if i try to open this one it will ask me that the project has been changed would you like to save it so when i open this z project file it will get rid of all the other models whereas when i open z tool file like say for example we'll open this one it will add to my zbrush project then there are additional z brush there are additional brushes these are default ones and zbrush has provided some more brushes that you can double click here and select these are again uh, mesh modifying techniques if you want to fat flatten certain surfaces you can go back to the previous menu by double clicking on this folder then there are different kinds of textures alpha maps so the way alpha maps work is say i have my standard brush on and uh, i can say select this one so now when i try to sculpt yeah i will have to make it a polymesh 3d then it is making taking multiple instances of this particular alpha if i change it to this one then it is making that particular kind of profiles and at the top then you have uh, something called as boolean uh, and then you have edit draw move tools scale tools is you can scale by clicking on that yellow square you can rotate your model so the kind the way navigation works in zbrush is very different than uh, the other programs like rhino or maya 3ds max so um, if you click if you left click on this uh, space outside the model if you left or right click outside the model you are orbiting and if you left click on the model you are sculpting and when you press control and then left click sorry right click outside the model you are zooming in and out and when you press alt and right click you are dragging uh, panning the model and um, for example right now if i want to uh, stick to a particular angle i have my right click pressed and when i press shift along with it now i'm snapping to particular views so it can some 
initially it can look intimidating uh, this ui can look intimidating because there are so many things here so that's why i'm right now only fo focusing on few elements that you can uh, use to start sculpting and start exploring and um, i will talk about uh, different kinds of modeling techniques in zbrush now so there are many uh, types of modeling techniques that you can use and also mix and match many of them for example the first one is you can use zbrush just to sculpt like you can just sculpt with various brushes like there is a clay brush here and it's it's handy to use a vacom um it's very comfortable when you use a vacom but uh, you can work with mouse as well just a moment i think my vacom is not working yeah and uh, it's very useful to initially block out primary shapes that you want when you are sculpting there are different kinds of other modeling techniques such as kit bashing or array mesh techniques there is something called shadow box so it's up to you how you want to go about it and when you go on the right if you go down to geometry so again right now you see the the number of the polygon here is less compared to here and this menu bar here if you see there there are different buttons such as solo mode so if you have many sub tools like say for example see i have so within this particular model i have multiple sub tools and uh, this one is right now as you can see this one is highlighted if i click on this one the other one gets highlighted and if i want to work only on one particular sub tool i can use solo mode so only that particular sub tool will get highlighted then there is something else called transparency you can work with transparency then um something called poly mesh draw poly surface so it will show you all the surface uh, all the polygon lines and uh, the uh, these other buttons are navigation buttons like move if you press f uh you will frame that particular sub tool then there is something called local symmetry so uh within zbrush you can have uh, two kinds of symmetry one is local symmetry and the other one is global symmetry so local symmetry sometimes so sometimes you have one model say over here and the other model over here then it will in global symmetry it will take the symmetry of the overall both of these models and in the local symmetry it is taking only the symmetrical line between these two models and then there is something called then you have a floor some most of the time you 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 are not working uh, on a floor like you would do on rhino or maya in zbrush you are a uh the way the navigation is you are able to work in different kinds of uh views from different kinds of angles you don't have to work with one particular angle 
so that way uh, it also helps for it also helps you to see your design in different way then you have perspective mode on then there is uh, you have so this is your canvas size on zbrush and uh, you can increase or reduce it you can put it to half half size this is actual size and uh, you can scroll the document and uh, there uh, is hello? yeah uh, is it okay if we ask questions while the yeah yeah we'll have Some a question going on or later yeah uh, do you have any particular question right now no i just wanted to know if uh, there are like units in zbrush units uh, like, yeah zbrush yeah, like, do we start with units or like no, we just actually, uh, eyeball everything yeah so in zbrush there is uh, something called size here so this determines the size of uh, so in zbrush you work more uh, with a bounding box rather than units and uh, because uh, this software is used primarily in the gaming and creative graphics industry uh, you just eyeball it you are uh, not not like rhino that you work precise precisely so in uh, you can work with the size and uh, uh, with size actually right now this model is 0 0.02 one so there is no unit actually mm -hmm. but uh, okay. in order to like i'll explain in uh, another model for example this one this model is right now 3.1 so ideally uh, for uh, the geometry mesh uh, like like with say standard brush right now i have size of three to five hundred thousand okay and um, when i have this model this small and uh, see when i do dynamesh it is giving me around two thousand point counts and when i increase the size with the same resolution of 128 it will give me a different kind of number so it is now giving me 1 million number and um, so in zbrush ideal number to work with with one particular model is around 2 so that will give you a proper uh, uh, polygon size yeah and we'll have a Q and A session at the end, so we can discuss any doubts if you have. So right now, I'm just yeah. trying to uh, brief uh, about different kinds of modeling techniques. So we right now explored uh, different kinds of sculpting techniques. The other one is you can uh, do kit bashing in ZBrush uh, using insert mesh brushes. So if you go here, there are different kinds of these IMM brushes that are insert multi mesh brush. So let's just say, um, let's just pick spaceship. Yeah. So in insert multi mesh brush, you have all the all these different kinds of meshes that you can insert onto this model like say this one and then I can just click and drag and it will determine the size later on you can uh, scale rotate move around and you can also create your own custom multi mesh brushes Then, uh, then on the right side, the other technique to work with uh, meshes is there are something called deformations. So you can, so this one I've made using 
these kind of deformation techniques and uh, uh, multi mesh brushes so you can uh, let's just pick this one you can bend this model you can twist it you can inflate spherize gravity you can play with all these different kinds of uh, deformations and then you have something called array mesh so it will array your mesh like you can increase the number of objects So that way, and also you can modify this mesh along with array mesh. So right now, if you can see my brush size is only this much, like even if it's thousand, it is not going beyond my model. If I want to change the shape of this one, I cannot. So that's why the overall size is helpful to have it around two to three. So now I'm able to change the profile. And then um, Then you can also use these different kinds of brushes like there's this brush called snake hook which works more or, uh, which works like move tool but you can create these kinds of it's more fluid than the move tool. And to initially start sketching out your uh, ideas, your models, it, it's helpful to use Dynamesh. So every time, every time you are again, so right now the mesh geometry uh, is either too small. That's why with 128 resolution, it is giving me only few uh, meshes, or oh, sorry, polygons. So if you see our uh, mesh, mesh size is only 0.17. That's why it is giving me less polygons. So I'll just press Control Z and uh, move it to two. And now when I dynamesh it with the same resolution, it will give me more polygons. Uh, sorry to interrupt. There's yeah. a lag. There's a lag in your video and oh. your audio, I guess. Oh, okay. I mean, yeah, like okay. for one minute you were sounding like a robot. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> give me, give, give it one moment. Yeah. Is it fine now? Yeah, yeah. 
Um, okay. Okay, yeah, and um, then you can also uh, bring in meshes from different programs and um, uh, then deform them. That is the uh, another modeling technique that you can use. And uh, in ZBrush, then with the use of uh, Z Modeler Brush, you can also create a very hard surface uh, models like okay. so this is quite similar to how Maya works, where you have you can work with faces, you can work with edges, you can work with uh, points, and uh, I find that uh, there are much more uh, features in ZBrush because right now you can, if you put, uh, just uh, keep your mouse at the point and press space. You have all these different kinds of um, actions that you can do with the point. Like I can uh, move this particular point. So right now when move is selected, for, for that I need to have my draw size bigger in order for me to move it. Then I can also work with edges. And again, when I keep my mouse at the, on the edge, I have a lot more functions. Like I can um, extrude, inset, move this edge. And um, I can slide this edge. So it is sliding only along this particular edge. I can use, um, I can delete uh, there's something called crease. So right now I'm giving crease to these edges. And um, in ZBrush, you're working with, uh, you're also working with different levels of subdivisions. Like if I press Control D, now I'm dividing this geometry. So I have this preliminary uh, geometry and then I have more I've sub subdivided that geometry, I can subdivide it more. And because I've given crease on that edge, it is giving me that, that hard surface. So now I'm giving um, much more subdivisions and I can count my number of polygons over here. These are active points, which means uh, these are active points, uh, polygons of uh, this particular geometry. If I have, if I duplicate this geometry here, my total point count uh, becomes the double of it. And as you have more uh, sub tools, this will show you uh, the number of total points, points in your mesh, in your model. And uh, along with working with Z modeler brush, you can also go back to your uh, move brush and say increase the brush uh, size and then change start modifying this mesh so right now i'm going very uh, sketchy i'm not uh, thinking about the kind of shape i want to make or just trying out different kinds of profiles you can um, like when you when you want to make deliberate shapes you can also do that and there's uh, something uh, so Within the navigation and uh, yeah, there's one more thing here is that when you press, so right now I'm sculpting on this particular model, say with the standard brush. 
I am sculpting here. And if I press shift and then I try to sculpt, it is changing the brush here. So if I lift my shift button, I have a standard brush. If I press shift, I have smooth brush. So you can work with multiple brushes at the same time. You can also change this smooth brush into something else if you want to say use inflate instead of smooth. So I'm working with uh, standard brush and then when I press shift, I'm working with inflate brush. Very smooth again. Hmm. Yeah. And uh, one more thing, the same way uh, the shift button works, if you press control, it will again give you a different kind of brush. It will give you masking brush. So in ZBrush, If you are, if you click control and I will reduce my brush size and I will give more subdivisions, first of all. Yeah. So we have more subdivisions. And now when I press control, as you can see, uh, this dark gray shade. So you're masking this particular area. Uh, what it means is that if you want to now, if I want to now sculpt, I will not be able to sculpt in this particular area. It is helpful because many a times you want to have very precise shapes, very precise profiles, like say, so you can mask those areas and if you keep pressing your uh, your control button and again press alt button together now you are uh, going in the negative uh, direction like you are eliminating that particular mask so this is sometimes helpful and uh, if you control if you keep, press control and uh, Drag, click and drag outside the model, it will clear your mask. And if you press control and just single click outside the model, it will inverse the mask. So that way, now you can go to say deformations, use inflate and have these kinds of uh, profiles. So, um, so right now I want to uh, also take a moment to introduce uh, a workshop that we are planning along with uh, design intervention uh, which is uh, we are launching it on november 7th and 8th of this year and where i will be teaching a lot more techniques um, in depth so these are so right now i'm just going briefly over it but there are so many other techniques like polygrouping and also uh, in masking and uh, how you use Z, uh, Z modeler to achieve say these kinds of brush, uh, shapes and how do you get these kinds of uh, sharp profiles and also um, you, how do you use a retopology to get, get these kinds of uh, profiles like this one and uh, yeah, and uh, we'll be sharing the registration link uh, soon. And um, I would like to invite all of you to register as soon as possible because we have about uh, 25 participants for this workshop. And um, so if you have any doubts regarding the workshop, please feel free to contact me on Instagram. And uh, right now, if you have any doubts about ZBrush, please feel free to uh, uh, text, uh, type in the chat box so I can, uh, I'll try my best to answer as many as possible.
or you can speak it out loud if it doesn't create any chaos oh uh, hi hello hello do you have any questions guys yeah hello hi i have a question hello can you hear me hello how does design translate to construction when designing zbrush what's the process okay um yeah i think i've unmuted forms as so there are uh, actually off the top of my head there is one uh, project that i know just a moment i'll share where uh, zbrush was used to uh, make particular shape in uh, in the construction process So yeah, uh, this project I know uh, of Morphosis, where these particular profiles were used to make. Uh, 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 sorry, uh, ZBrush was used to make these particular profiles, and you can also. So right now I've just shown very random and blobby shapes, but you can make these kinds of uh, very uh, um, how do you say hard surface models. and very refined shapes and then you can take it to another program uh, and uh, take uh, say cut sections or you can uh, use it for more uh, develop you can develop the model and these profiles into other um, softwares okay i sometimes find it difficult to find a chat box ha ah, okay um thank you for your introduction how do you do the process of rationalization what kind of files to be imported uh, and exported in zbrush you can export uh, and import uh, ob obj files fbx files stl files these are all the different kinds of obj maya files fbx stl then you can um, then you can also import uh, fbx file from plugin menu fbx here import and export then uh, how can we paint and put images as textures on zbrush models uh, you can import textures here like let's just you can uh, at the top you can click on rgb channel and um, let's let me work with only this particular model yeah so i have uh, standard brush i have rgb channel on and uh, for you to paint on it you need to click on this brush here then you will be able to paint so right now i'm painting and also sculpting along with it so if i don't want to sculpt i can turn off z add and then just paint um yeah and textures the yeah actually there are a lot of so right now if i have texture on it is kind of giving me a very um it is um how do i say this it is not giving me the right effect that i want but you can 
uh, UV map your model. So every map, uh, every model has a UV map that we will get, get into it uh, in detail in the workshop. But uh, something there is something called UV master. So once you UV map it from here, then uh, there's you have a texture map here. So right now also I can apply a texture map. Let's just apply this one. It is saying apply UV mapping or polypainting. What you can do is you can have, you can create a UV planar map or UV box map. So right now it has a box map and then you have that particular texture applied as a box, uh, as a box map. Yeah. Um, hey, it was good. As, uh, my question is that can we import other software medium models to work in? Yeah, you can exp uh, import other models. Um, you can import other models from here. Just click import 3D mesh and then you can import other models. How, how is the inter uh, probability in ZBrush? How well you control the mesh creation with Grasshopper? Um, I don't understand your question. Are you saying that uh, is this mesh parametric, uh, or uh, um, or are you saying that can we import meshes from Grasshopper and work in ZBrush? I mean, you can you can speak out loud if you want. I'm, I don't understand your question, Siddharth Siddharthan. Okay, um, can we import vector line work and develop those in ZBrush to explore different geometries from those same set of lines? In ZBrush, you can't work with uh, lines as in how you work uh, in Rhino. In ZBrush, you have to have um, a mesh. Also uh, in ZBrush, sometimes it's difficult to work with single planes. You can work with single pla planes. For example, this mesh, I can edit. I can edit it as long as I want this to be just a single plane. You can give a different brush. I can increase. So I'm just pressing control D to increase the polygon count. And that way, say if I use a different brush called play build up. And uh, um, so right now, as you can see, we have a square alpha. That's why I'm making these kinds of square profiles. But if I change, if I turn it off, if I use the spray brush, then I'm make, creating these kinds of profiles. Um, is the fluid shape panel 3D printed or assembled part by part or set in customized molds? Is it easier than Maya 3D? Uh, is fluid shape panel, panel 3D printed? or assemble part by part, oh, okay, or set in customized molds. Uh, you can uh, generate uh, 3D printable meshes from here. There is the different plugins where you can, so for 3D printing, you need a maximum count of 1 million. So if, you, if your model is below that, uh, you can 3D print. Uh, but if your model is above 1 million, you can use something called uh, decimation master to reduce your polygon count while also maintaining the same uh, detail so you can use 3d printing uh, you can 3d print your model that way and then you can also make your meshes for example this mesh right now is or maybe this one is a complete solid mesh, but you can also 
uh, hollow your mesh so that they are 3D printable. Like in terms of architectural elements, is there any limit to explorations? I'm unable to unmute. And yes, I was talking about inter portability in ZBrush. Sorry about the typo. Uh, yeah, you can import uh, meshes from Grasshopper and then work with here. So um, the kind so ZBrush. Um, like the way you work with the Rhino and Grasshopper and the kind of system you have in that, uh, a procedural system that you have in Grasshopper, that is uh, a different way to work. Whereas in ZBrush, you are, um, uh, that procedural method, uh, like it's not there, but uh, it's just a, a different way to work. It's like you are working more as a sculptor uh, in ZBrush. So um, these meshes are not uh, procedural that way, but you can, any, you can uh, use ZBrush to sketch out your um, initial ideas and later on take, say uh, this model, Yeah, so what I've done is, like you see this particular profile, the inner one, that I've modeled in Grasshopper. So what I did is I, I took these two particular, these two uh, parts into Grasshopper and took splines of, uh, uh, took uh, curves from this uh, geometry. And then from there, I created this particular uh, mesh. So you can mix match both of these software and that way i feel uh, it will enrich the architecture more uh, rather than just using one particular software so you can mix and match the different softwares as well oh um, i'm sorry okay i'll try to unmute uh, okay participants let me check how to how to do that Um, meeting info, start live, mute, audio settings. Hmm. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm not able to find how to unmute. Participants, oh, okay. Mm, allow participants to be I, mute. Participants upon ask all to unmute. Okay. Uh, enable waiting room. Uh, play sound when someone allow participants to rename themselves. Okay. I, I think it's fine now. Hello. Hello. Yeah. yeah. Now, now I'm, we are unmuted. I am so sorry. I think uh, my laptop. <laughs> I'm so sorry. My laptop. Uh, was on mute. Uh, Zoom was not on mute, but my laptop it's was okay. on mute. I'm so sorry. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I think it's easier for everyone to, you know, ask questions directly okay. rather than, okay. you know, typing. So, okay. Yeah. Hmm. So, uh, do you have any questions? Any last question or maybe uh, second last question you can take? Uh, I would just like to appreciate this uh, session. Thank you so much. Thank you for doing this. Okay. Okay, so uh, are these uh, your models? Yeah. Like the, the... Yeah, yeah. Very cool. Thank you.
can these models be animated like you said this is used in a gaming industry and also can the models be animated or is there a separate plugin yeah you can um, you can't animate in zbrush but you can take these models um, in maya or uh, any other program like cinema 4d and then you can animate these models you uh, can you show some more uh, examples of how you have applied this in architecture as in the modeling yeah, yeah. Uh, you can all uh, see my screen right yes yeah um so Yeah, so these are some of my uh, works where I'm using ZBrush. So you can create fairly simple shapes as well as uh, complex ones. So this model that you see, this one, was initially a sketch model like this. So this was the initial sketch model, which, if you um, like if you zoom in uh it just random meshes like as you see over here but then so i have one more model which yeah like this one so as you can see this one the bottom one is just a very blobby clay like mesh but then i am developing upon it Just a moment. Yeah. But as you can see here, I'm developing much more refined shapes on top of it. This is like magic. <laughs> crazy so this was uh, yeah this was the initial uh, sculpt and on top of it then i refined that particular mesh to make it like this yeah. and yeah some of it are not architectural directly but they are very speculative um, models that way so there are other different kinds of um, sculpting techniques you can use to you can import different kinds of texture images and use them into uh, and convert them into meshes So I would like to thank all of you for joining. I think it was great. Um, I wish I could have listened to you guys more. I wish my laptop was, was not on mute, but uh, maybe we can have uh, more discussions and uh, we can uh, in the workshop. I invite you all guys to join the workshop and we can explore, we can, um, advance, we can advance architecture in a much, much more uh, further direction. Thank you so much, guys. Um, I think I will uh, stop the live stream and um, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.